Hey guys, how we doing today? It is Wednesday, and welcome back to Fan Talk. I just wanted to give you a little update on my advent calendar. I shared this in last week's episode or two weeks' episode ago, I can't remember. But look how far we're coming. We're at five days till Christmas, so only five more. Actually, only four more guys to pick. Uh, today was Cooper Cup on the Los Angeles Rams. So, there you are. Oh! All right, guys, welcome back to another edition of Fan Talk, your favorite podcast by your favorite fan. That's me, Kyle Brenchley, K. Brench in the house. How we doing this Wednesday? It is cloudy outside, and therefore the lighting is a little dim. So hopefully the dim lighting does not make a damper on your day. It's going to be an awesome day. We have another edition of Fan Talk. We're going to have a lot to talk about. We're going to be talking about the NFL, the playoff picture, uh, and pretty much all the coaches that have been fired and may be fired. So it'll be a very NFL-heavy episode this week, but thank you guys for tuning in. We'll get to college football next week. A lot of bowl games are starting here in the next week, so we'll talk about that for sure. But this is a podcast by me, Kyle Brenchley. You can find it on Spotify, on YouTube, on iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcasts. I film it, so it's on YouTube. That is where you can find it as well. So let's us talk. Ooh, before we begin, um, my song advent calendar for Christmas. I showed you the little NFL figurines earlier. Five days till Christmas. Are you guys ready? I for sure am. Gotcha. You guys thought I was going to say for sure not. Okay, so here is the song of the day, December 20th. What Christmas Means to Me by John Legend. That is the song. It says John Legend takes on this earnest song for his album, A Legendary Christmas. And who's that playing harmonica? It's Stevie Wonder again. Cool. I don't think I've heard that song. I'll have to go check it out again. It's What Christmas Means to Me by John Legend. All right. Well, so I feel like, so I, I, I film these on Wednesdays and the Thursday night football game always seems like it's so far away. Uh, I mean, granted, it was six days ago. So, I mean, we'll definitely talk about the result of that game, but holy cow, the Las Vegas Raiders, 63-21, to I think was the final score over the Los Angeles Chargers, and that was the final nail in the coffin for Brandon Staley, who Chargers fans were really, really calling for his head. They, they thought last year after the playoff collapse against uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they thought that was it. Essentially, uh, the Chargers were up, by 30 points going into halftime, uh, it was like 35 to zero or, or 28 to zero, something like that. And they blew it and the Jaguars came back and won. And you just scratch your head and say, what, what just happened? there?" So a lot of people thought he was going to be fired then 63 to 21 blowout against the Las Vegas Raiders, a team that literally put up zero points against the Vikings a week earlier. Yeah, you're done. So, Brandon Staley, gone. The Raiders, they were playing a Raiders team that had already fired their coach. Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler were both gone. Frank Reich, gone. Brandon Staley, gone. So, who's next? There's been offensive coordinators fired too. Matt Canada, that was big news out of Pittsburgh. He's gone. So what's next? I feel like every year, and when I say I feel, I mean, this is the case every year. Coaches get fired, coaches get hired. It's it's the coaching carousel. I made a video about it a little while ago. So that begs the question. There's some vacancies in the house. Los Angeles Chargers. Brandon Staley, he's gone. He was there three years, went 24 and 24. Made the playoffs once, blew the lead to the Jaguars. Oh, it was 27 points. That's what it was, 27 points, which is the third largest comeback in playoff history. It's unfortunate. So I've heard a lot of rumors. Bill Belichick to the Chargers. They're not having a great season in New England. Tom Brady's long gone. 3-11, and Mac Jones is not the answer. They're, they're probably going to do a total rebuild which means even with the coach. Bill Belichick, he's just such a great 
offensive mind, great defensive mind, just great overall coach. I don't really see him not having a job. If he retires, he retires. That's a different story. But if the Patriots part ways with him, I see another team picking him up. And the Chargers could be that team. Just, just think about this for a moment. If this happens, theoretically, and the Raiders get a different coach as well, maybe like a Jim Harbaugh, who potentially might be coming back to the NFL, rumors has it, uh, especially after his um, incident with Michigan this last year with sign stealing and all that jazz. The AFC West would have Andy Reid coach the Chiefs, Sean Payton coach the Broncos, Bill Belichick coach of the Chargers, and Jim Harbaugh coach of the Raiders. That's a big, big, big theoretical. But can you imagine that? That would be absolutely nuts. And then there's the Carolina Panthers job. This job was probably the least enticing last year. Um, they got rid of Matt Rule and they hired Frank Reich, who was the former coach of the Colts, who had done some good things there, um, but the Colts had a very bad year last year. So he gets fired and then gets hired as the Carolina Panthers coach, but proceeds to go 1-10. And frankly, get it? Frankly? <laughs> frankly, Bryce Young is taking a little more time to develop. The rest of the offense just really isn't that good. The defense can only hold the ground for so long. Special teams, nothing special. So, I mean, 1 in 10, like, yeah, that's going to happen when you have a quarterback that just isn't quite there yet. Unfortunately, you traded up to get him, and he hasn't panned out, and everything else just isn't great. I mean, the, the, the Panthers are not a great franchise. They went 1 in 15 in 2001. They haven't really done much. They did get the win over the Falcons, which was awesome because I picked the Panthers. But this is this is gonna be a hard job to fill. I mean, sure, yeah, you got Bryce Young, you got the upside, and you got some good players, but in the last five seasons, three coaches have been fired in the last five seasons. So doesn't have a lot of patience. Um, too big of a task. It's it's not the best. Raiders, Josh McDaniels, he got fired after two seasons. Well, he didn't even finish his second season. He went 9-16. and 16. Honestly, it wasn't great. Didn't really do much. They inherited a 10-7 and seven Raiders team that actually had made the playoffs. So, they were like, things can only get better, right? Antonio Peters has been filling in. He probably won't get the full-time job. They'll probably go after someone else. Raiders, they're a fun team. I mean, they're my rivals for sure, but they could also get a Bill Belichick. Who knows? Who knows? And there's plenty of coordinator openings. Jack Del Rio from the the Commanders has been fired. Matt Canada from the Steelers has been fired. Ken Dorsey of the Buffalo Bills has been fired. Mick Lombardi has been fired from the Raiders. It's It's been, I want to say quiet, but it hasn't been super loud. And sure, yeah, at the end of the season... There will be some more. There are some coaches on the hot seat. I'd say, um, I mentioned Bill Belichick, which is weird to say Bill Belichick on the hot seat. I don't think he'll get fired. I think it will be, I think they'll word it as a, a part ways or mutual parting if they do decide to move on. Arthur Smith of the Falcons, he could be on the way out. A lot of people are saying Todd Bowles, but the Buccaneers are kind of doing good now. Uh, Robert Sala. Is definitely on the hot seat. And um, who else would be on the hot seat? Pretty much those guys right now. There could be more. It depends on how the season goes. But it'll be interesting to see what happens, as always. Um, it's nice that the Broncos haven't fired Sean Payton. Uh, last year, Nathaniel Hackett, we won't even go down that road. I've already been down that road. And uh, hopefully they can turn it around. So let's talk 
playoffs. And I know I've been talking about playoffs for the last couple weeks, but we're really getting down to the last three weeks of the season. Every win counts. Every loss is devastating. So let me break down the scenarios for you here. With ESPN, they have a playoff machine that I mentioned before. I invite you guys to go play with it. Go check it out. I think CBS Sports has one. NFL Network has one. Whatever is your fancy, go check it out. It's, uh, it's kind of this fun little thing. But what you could do, you pick the matchup three each week, and it shows you the scenarios. It says, you know, this is what would happen if this team won. This is what would happen if this team won. So, with three weeks left in the season, here is the current playoff picture for both NFC and AFC. Let's start in the NFC. Currently, the number one seed, if the playoffs ended today, or if the season ended today and the playoffs started today, would be the San Francisco 49ers. And I believe, personally, that they are the number one seed. They are the best team in the NFC right now. They are dominant on offense. Their defense is tough as nails. Brock Purdy is playing well. They're coached well. They have all their weapons. They're not, they're not that injured. They're not a hurt team. They're not a sick team. They're a healthy team right now. They're rolling. They found their stride. They're doing well. Uh, and I think they have a favorable schedule. They do have a tough game against Baltimore this week. But then they have... Uh, the Commanders, and the Rams to finish out the season. So very possible they could go 3-0, and maybe 2-1, and and still be 13-4 and and finish in the top seed. Number two seed is the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I think, honestly, 2, 3, and 5 are all similar to me. So the Dallas Cowboys are 2, Detroit is 3, and the Eagles are 5. They all have the 5-4 and four record. They all have really good offenses. Dallas has a great defense. Philadelphia has Jalen Hurts. And Detroit has incredible offensive firepower and a great coach. So I kind of all rank them together because they've won a lot of games. They're really good. But they've also lost some games. And... Probably all of them, when going to go up against the 49ers, would lose. I think the 49ers would, would beat them in, in every single scenario. And I think they would lose to AFC teams. Uh, we saw the Cowboys get blown out by the Bills. Um, the Lions did beat the Chiefs, but I, I, I would see the Chiefs maybe winning a rematch. In Baltimore, I see Baltimore beating a Detroit team. They already did. Beating a Philadelphia team. Even beating a Dallas team. So... Um, they're all fighting for spots there. Four seed, of course, has to go to a divisional leader. So that is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think they'll win the division. I don't... The Falcons aren't great. Panthers are out. And the Saints are just not consistent. I have more confidence in Baker and the Bucks right now. And then the sixth seed is the Minnesota Vikings. It'll be interesting to see if they can hold on. It's going to be tough because Green Bay and Seattle and the Rams are all in the mix. Uh... New Orleans, too, really. So they're rolling with um, Nick Mullins. So we'll see what happens there. They're kind of injured. They got Justin Jefferson back, but they're kind of injured everywhere else. And then the Rams are the seventh seed. They're playing well. I wouldn't be surprised if the Rams got in. I think of those teams that I mentioned, Vikings, Rams, Packers, Seahawks, Saints, I think the Rams... Two of those five are going to get in. I think the Rams are one of those teams, and then the, the other four will we'll fight it out. Over in the AFC, we got the number one seed. It's the Baltimore Ravens. I think they deserve that. Very good team. They beat a good Jacksonville team. Their defense is good. Lamar Jackson's always a threat. Miami's number two. Kansas City's number three. Jacksonville's number four. I think that's pretty accurate. I, Kansas City might become the two seed. Miami has a tough schedule, um, but I really see it as Baltimore will be the one seed. Either Kansas City or Miami will be two or three. Jacksonville, we'll see what happens with Jacksonville. They're currently tied with the Colts, and the Texans are only one game behind as well. Um, so, actually, they're all tied at eight and seven. So, we'll see what happens. Currently, Jacksonville does have the tiebreaker, and they currently are in the four seed. But, I believe they do play. Jacksonville does play. Well, it's the Colts and the Texans that play in Week 18. That would really determine things. Jacksonville has a tough game against Tampa Bay this week, so we'll see what happens there. Currently, the 5 seed is Cleveland. They're surprising everyone. Their defense is good enough to get them into the playoffs. I think they get in. Bengals are a 6 seed. 
and Colts are seven seed. So fighting for a playoff spot in the AFC, it's pretty hairy too. So Cleveland Browns, nine and five. Bengals, eight and six. Colts, eight and six. Texans, eight and six. Bills, seven and seven. Broncos, seven and seven. And um, even Raiders at six and eight. So seven teams fighting for three spots. I do really think the the Browns get one. And honestly, the Bills are playing really good. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bills got one. And then it's really going to come down to what the Colts, Texans, Broncos can do. I'm not sure if the Raiders can get in. And um, Steelers are kind of in the mix, but not really. So it's going to be tight. It's going to be crazy. Let's see what we got this week. Let's talk about the individual games and let's go from there. Thursday Night Football will be the Saints at Rams. I like what I see in the Rams. They played well. They did let the Commanders come back a little, but for the most part, they played a really good game Sunday. Give me the Rams. As I mentioned before, I think they get into the playoffs. Bengals at Steelers. I'm going to pick the Bengals in this one, even though the Steelers won the first game. I just think the Steelers are hitting a rough patch at the wrong time. And this loss will essentially knock him out of playoff contention. Bills at Chargers. Bills just obliterated, absolutely obliterated, humiliated the Dallas Cowboys. I like them to do the same to the Chargers. Colts at Falcons. I'd really want the Falcons to win this one. This would really help out the Denver Broncos. But the Colts are a better team. Falcons are just not good with Desmond Ritter and Arthur Smith. One or both of those guys are going to go. Give me the Colts. Seahawks at Titans. Wow. Let me tell you. Drew Locke, former Denver Bronco, current Seattle Seahawk, has been back up for two years to Geno Smith. Now is starting because Geno Smith has had an injury. He played. He didn't play that great, honestly, throughout the game. He was, he was very mid throughout the game. But that last drive, I must give him credit, that last drive made a bunch of big-time throws with his big arm and won the game. And that's all it takes is one big drive, one big moment, saved his career. We might have a quarterback competition there in Seattle. Give me the Seahawks over the Titans. Lions at Vikings. I like the Lions in this one. They're always a safe bet. Um, maybe if the Vikings had Kirk Cousins, I'd pick the Vikings. But with Nick Mullins, uh, I don't really see them because it's going to be a shootout. You know, the Lions are going to put up a lot of points, and I don't know if Nick Mullins can put up, you know, 30-plus points in a game. Give me the Lions. Commanders and Jets. I like the Commanders in this one. This is a game that doesn't really matter. Both teams are out of the playoffs, um, so I won't waste my time. Go Commanders. Packers at Panthers. Shout out to the Panthers. They won. And shout out to all those fans that stayed in the rain to watch a 2-12 team win. But I think the Packers win this one and keep their playoff hopes alive. Browns at Texans. As of right now, CJ Stroud is not playing. It's a Wednesday. If he does play, I'm picking the Texans. If he does not play, I'm picking the Browns. And since we're not sure if he's going to play, I'm going to go with the Browns right now. But CJ Stroud plays. I think the Texans have a really good shot. Jacksonville Jaguars at Buccaneers. I'm going with the Buccaneers in this one. This might be my upset pick of the week. Baker threw for 381 yards and four touchdowns last week against the Packers in Green Bay. Incredible in December. Florida guy or Florida team doing that. Uh, this will be a battle of, of North Florida, but I do think that Tampa Bay comes out with this one over the Jags as they continue to slide. Cardinals at Bears. Um, I'll say the Bears in this one. Why not? It'll be interesting to see what they end up doing with Justin Fields and the number one overall pick because they'll definitely be getting that because of the Panthers. Cowboys at Dolphins. Ooh, Cowboys are bad on the road. We definitely learned that last week as they got smothered by the Bills. So give me the Dolphins. That game is on Fox on Christmas Eve. Check it out. Patriots at Broncos. I like the Broncos in this one. They played a very poor game against the Lions, but... They're playing the Patriots. They need this win more than ever. They'll be wearing their alternate snow-capped helmets. If you haven't seen those, go check it out. Really cool uniform combination. That is Christmas Eve. Raiders at Chiefs. Uh, Chiefs, 
I think, for sure in that one. Giants at Eagles. Eagles definitely have to bounce back. This is a Monday night game on Christmas Day, or Christmas Monday Day game, Christmas Day game. And then Christmas night, we have the Baltimore Ravens at the 49ers. I think the 49ers win this one, but it's going to be good. It better be good. You know, you, sometimes you say, oh, this game's going to be good, but it doesn't turn out. It better be good. I think I think they'll put up a lot of points, and I think that ultimately Brock Purdy and the gang will get it done and win this game. Um, it's, in, it's in San Francisco, so, so that should help for sure. All right, so those are my picks. Week 16, it's upon us. Who, who's in, who's out, we're going to find out, not just for the playoffs, but also for coaching. We're keeping an eye on the number one pick. Currently, it's the Bears who has it. The Patriots will have a high pick, so maybe they take a quarterback. Cardinals as well, maybe they do. We'll see. It'll be fun to watch. Again, thanks guys for tuning in, and Merry Christmas. Next time I see you, it will be after Christmas, so Merry Christmas. Have a, have a wonderful, happy holidays. Um... God bless. Let us remember our, our, our Savior, Jesus Christ, this holiday season. Let's honor Him. Let's spend time with our family. Let's, let's, let's care about those who are in need. Let's, let's be there for each other, and let's have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas season. Thank you guys so much for listening and or watching. This is me, Kyle Brenchley on Fan Talk, signing off. Merry Christmas, and have a great day.